Hey, this is Russ Dizdar. We are doing the session, How to Get Rid of Dark Spirits. Some have called this auto-deliverance. Let me begin by praying. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray right now, everyone listening, wherever in the world, and whatever time, that you would deliver them in the name of Jesus. I pray right now by the omnipresence of the living Christ, by the authority of Christ, I command every demonic spirit to be broken, crushed, and I pray for individuals listening right now to be delivered. May the Spirit of God convict of sin, lead to freedom in Christ and forgiveness, and may the power of the Spirit of God be operative in the listener's life. May your love and you, Lord Jesus, embrace them. Anyone lost, may you save them, God, in the midst of hearing. Wherever there is interference that are tempted to block, we ask you to crush all demonic work entities in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for this right now. We ask your blessing on all those who listen. In Jesus' name. I want to say again, welcome. This is Russ Dizdar. We're going to do a session on uh, how to get rid of dark spirits. A little bit shorter than the earlier one I did about a year ago. And uh, both of them, I think, will, are going to be good. But uh, like all things, it's not exhaustive. But simply, um, as I look at the Word of God, First John 3, 8, the reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the devil's work. And so when we talk about this and know our authority and we live uh, with the armor of God on and live in the power of God, in the mission of God, evangelism, to the world that we live in today, we're going to definitely deal with demonic presence battling us, stopping us, or trying to stop us. And or, um, well, let me, let me deal with four areas of demonic presence. And every believer listening right now should remember Ephesians 6, about having the mighty power of God manifest in your life. How do you do that? Put on the full armor of God. Now, this session isn't on the armor of God, but you should know it. It is uh, what every single believer should have been discipled in in the first six months of their walk in Christ. Have the full armor of God on. Listen, when you read Ephesians 6, the struggle, the battle, the warfare is not against flesh and blood. It is against those rulers, principalities, powers uh, in the heavenly realms, the forces, the full forces of darkness. There's a battle. This is the reason Jesus gave to us authority. When we go back to Luke's Gospel, chapter 10, and in the context of sending out laborers and those who are going to preach the gospel and heal the sick in Jesus' name, but also in Jesus' name, with the authority Christ has given to command out and off of individuals' dark spirits. Jesus said the words, I have given you, perfect tense, I have given you, and it remains forever, I have given you authority to trample on the demonic realm, literally the demonic realm, and to overcome, that is, have victory over all the power of the enemy and nothing will harm you. Now, again, study the chapter well and understand as a believer in Christ, you should be able to appropriate. That is, say, Lord, I acknowledge that you have given me authority. I accept this authority for what it's supposed to do. It is supposed to be used to come against dark powers, demons, So right now, Lord, I accept the authority that you have given me that lives and dwells within me, and I will use it to the glory of God. Every believer should know their authority in the first numbers of weeks that they are a new believer in Christ. Here are the simple four areas uh, where we can exercise that authority and uh, find freedom for ourselves and helping others, too. Number one, simply demonic presence on the outside. Number two, demonic presence on the inside. Number three, demonic presence in the sense of indwelling. And then number four, uh, the sense of um, complex possession. Let me, let me mention number one, uh, demonic presence on the outside. That's what Ephesians 6 is all about. That's what the issue with Peter, when Jesus said, Simon, Simon, Satan has asked to sift you as wheat, but I've prayed for you that your faith would not fail. It is the outside 
attack, the sense when, well, the evidence of it sometimes is when people feel, quote, they say all the time, I feel a cloud over me or uh, oppression over me or oppression around me or oppression in a room or a house or an area. You feel oppression spiritually. You know, as a believer, you have the love, joy, peace, uh, the fruit of the Spirit. And there is a victory in Jesus, a freedom in Jesus, a joy in Jesus, and the fire of the Spirit of God. And contrary to that is when there is a manifest dark presence around us or attacking us. Ephesians 6 talks about lifting up the shield of faith by which you will extinguish all the flaming arrows of the enemy or of the evil one. Now realize there is a sender. Somebody is sending. Demonic presence is sending those arrows. What are the arrows? Most believers I've talked to don't know. Simply this, involuntary thoughts and feelings that come directly or are sent directly by demons. Demons, if you think of it in terms of whispering out or speaking out of the spiritual realm, or sending a sense of a wave of feeling. All of a sudden, involuntary feelings are coming over you. Thoughts are coming into you. God doesn't love you. God's not around. You don't feel like going to church. You don't feel like reading the Word. You don't feel like praying. Um, Anything the enemy does on the area of sent involuntary feelings, sent involuntary thoughts coming your way, well, it's always going to be... Stuff that is going to um, lead you away from the will of God, lead you away from the victory, lead you away, and uh, bring suppression, bring doubt, bring confusion. Now, Satan is the author of confusion. God is not. Satan is the, um, he is the one that brings the attack. Ephesians 6 is clear, and uh, the Last Supper with Peter and the disciples, it's clear. Satan does seek to attack. Every believer should understand uh, 1 Peter chapter 5. Peter wrote this later by experience, by the Holy Spirit, that we're to be self-controlled and alert. That little Greek word alert there in chapter 5 means being uh, aware of imminent danger, aware of imminent spiritual danger. Because he goes on to say, your enemy, the devil, well, he's prowling around like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. So a lot of the spiritual warfare that comes against us comes by the sense of cloud or oppression or uh, uh, the involuntary feelings and thoughts. Now, what I've learned over the years for all the thoughts, when I've sat back and identified, you know, it seems like the enemy is sending me these thoughts that uh, this evangelistic work we're going to do is not going to do well or, you know, something contrary to the word. In every case, there is a word of God to speak against it. Like Jesus, Matthew 4, when he stood, when the devil himself even used twisting the scripture in the wrong way, Jesus would stand and quote the written word of God. And so many times we need to, instead of being oppressed, um, simply um, stand up in a sense, be vocal about it, and quote the word of God, and uh, speak against the feelings and the thoughts of the involuntary feelings and thoughts that are being sent by the demonic realm. Now, it involves simply, and I'm going to go over five areas, but it involves simply, you know, again, recognition. A lot of believers go around with those spiritual arrows all over them. They're walking into the church. They've got arrows in their head, in their heart, all over them. Arrows where lies are sent by the enemy, and they've not done anything about it. Where involuntary feelings, and they're depressed, and they're, you know, we need to realize that so many things that we experience and so many things some Christians accept are the lies and the doubts that the enemy has sent that we at first had been struck as an involuntary feeling, involuntary. In other words, it didn't originate from you. It It originated from the outside sender. So the sender sent you. And if you let those lies and those things that run contrary to Christ, His Word, the will of God, your walk, your faith, if you let them sit there long enough, they will continue to build and layer. And so I simply refer to this as auto-deliverance in the sense, you know, clearing the air, clearing the things around me. If I feel, and there is a sense of feel 
uh, because I know the manifest presence of the Holy Spirit, the love, the joy, the freedom, the fire of um, walking in the Spirit in the living presence of Christ. The dark side has an operative, or I'm sorry, well, it's operative, but an opposite, oppressive. And of course they hate us. And of course they despise us. And of course they seek to bring this war. They do. And if we're going to be involved in evangelism, leading a soul to Christ involves spiritual warfare. Uh, Pouring out prayer for the advance of the church involves spiritual warfare. So if you're a believer, let's get over it. We're going to be attacked. We're going to be attacked, and um, there's going to be times when oppression and other things are coming our way. And we don't have to just sit and take it. We will need to do, and I'm going to mention the five things. Number one, surrender everything to Jesus, which includes... um, You know, just opening up wide to him. Number two, asking Jesus to deliver and to even attack the enemy. Number three, to renounce any and all sins and doors and things that we know that we've given room to or even held on to some of the lies of the enemy. And number four, to command it all away, to clear the air, to clear yourself, to say, in the name of Jesus, uh, I'll go over this in a little bit. A little bit clearer. And then um, number five, uh, to say, Lord Jesus, refill me with the Holy Spirit and Psalm 8110. And we'll go into this even a little bit deeper here in a moment. I just simply want to say from the outside, number one, outside. Number two, literally, number two is on. The idea of that presence coming on you. Number three, the idea of inside. Number four, the idea of complex possession. So number one, when oppression, spiritual cloud, attack, and thoughts and feelings are coming down on you, suppressing your faith, it involves lies, it involves contradictions, it involves confusion, it involves the idea that there are real demons sending those arrows. Those arrows are just a figure. They are communications. You can, um, you can feel those or you can uh, have those kind of invade your thoughts. So we need to respond and clear the air because of the outside spiritual work that comes. And I'll go over the five points that will cover all of these a little bit deeper here. Number, but first, number two, when demonization occurs on, or what we've called in the past, we've called it in the past, um, attachment. And the reason we call it that is, um, again, Ephesians chapter 4. Great spiritual book there, Ephesians. And here's what it says. It tells us that, um, well, we're told clearly, you know, be angry but don't sin. Don't let the sun go down on your anger. And that's God giving instruction about our interpersonal relationships. And it's very clear here that anger undealt with that can turn into bitterness and resentment and so forth, well, that becomes, well, as the Word of God says, don't give the devil a foothold, a topon, a legal right, an actual kind of a small opening to an area of your life. Can a believer have this kind of demonization or attack? And it has the idea of not just outside, which all of us will experience, and we all need to walk in the armor of God and authority, but number two, on. When the idea is that the believer, the person themselves have opened the door. If a believer is, well, let me just say clearly unwise or uh, crazy enough to play games with a Ouija board or listen to what a psychic says or do something that opens a door, way to the enemy. That's what Topon is all about in Ephesians 4. God tells us not to, um, in that context, not to grieve the Holy Spirit in the, in the sense of sin, and not to um, let sins go undealt with, because the possibility is, kind of like um, when you think in terms of a hot summer day, and you take trash bags out on the corner like I live out in the country area, and we put them out there. Now, if they're not tied up well, Um, and they're open, the crows will come and they'll smell things and come in and start ripping open the bag further and getting to things. If the bag's left out there two or three days, well, it's very clear that a raccoon or in the city, rats will come because of the smell of the rotting food. Well, if you think in terms of sin being rotten, being the substance, being the stuff that the enemy not only likes to inspire, 
but to then uh, cause an increase to, and then kind of reach out and grab hold of. So if a believer gets into anger or other sin areas that are undealt with, that continue and continue and continue, it is very possible that the enemy will come and grab that area and uh, make it a real stronghold and bring real defeat to a believer's life. So the Word of God simply says, you know, don't let the you know sun go down in that anger. In other words, deal with it, you know, that day. And then it says, and then don't give the devil a foothold. Can I ask you, in any way are you giving the enemy a foothold, a right, a right to grab hold, a right to come on an area of your life? It's not the same thing as possession of your spirit, soul, and body, but the idea of attachment, on. And again, the simple issue is here. If you've opened the door and you've given into something and you've allowed um, the dark spirit to then kind of grab hold of a sin area, a doorway that you've allowed to be open, a legal right where they grab hold and begin to make that a stronghold and begin to bring defeat and harassment to you, well, you're going to have to do two things. Number one, recognize what you've done to repent of it. You've got to repent. It's one thing to command the demons to get away, but you've got to close the door. If I open the back door of my house in the inner city and leave it open for a long enough time, I guarantee you robbers and thieves will eventually come. So you've got to close the door and lock the door. I think Colossians 3 is very clear. Put to death the mis- you know these, these areas of the old sin nature. Or even Romans chapter 8. Uh, to put to death the misdeeds of the old sin nature. So it's putting them to death. It's closing the door, nailing the door shut, and that's it. Burn the bridges. Get away. Walk away. Otherwise, you will end up giving the devil a foothold. So you'll have to both repent of and, yeah, say, Lord, deliver me, and get out in the name of Jesus to clear the area in your life. But it will not happen fully if you do not repent In other words, quit walking in the sin nature, the flesh, and um, renounce that. 1 John 1, 9, if you confess your sins, now he is faithful and just to forgive you and to cleanse you instantly. Time doesn't bring forgiveness. Jesus does. And you need to look to him now. Even now, you can shut this off and repent and ask the Lord and tell him, I'm sorry for grieving the Holy Spirit. I'm sorry for messing things up. I'm sorry for putting so much uh, that I've given so much time to all of this. I repent of it. I turn away from it. I love Proverbs 28.13. It's a good word. You know, if you conceal your sin, you will not prosper. But if you will uh, renounce it, and the idea of confessing and renouncing and then forsake it, well, you'll find mercy. And I think also Hebrews 12 deals with the idea of throwing off everything that hinders you. Let's go on to number three, the idea of demons literally on the inside. Now here's where we get into the word, if you look in the the New Testament, where it talks about possession uh, or having a demon. Demon, it's, it's diamonozoid. It's the idea of demonization. And yes, specifically as an unbeliever, a demon can be, you know, get inside body, soul, and spirit. In other words, really possess, really take control, really um, be deeply operative. And the issue here is, I'm not real sure that a person really totally possessed can get free. You know, if you're not a believer in Christ, you can't get free on your own. You can will to fight against things. You can stop doing things. But if they've gotten in by your willingness or whatever other reasons, then, um, and again, the prayer that I would pray earlier and even now in the name of Jesus, because of his omniscience, omnipresence, I would command any demons in and on you to be completely destroyed, First John 3, 8, and for the Lord to deliver you. But let me say to anyone that, that thinks they are completely possessed, I really believe that not just an audio like this will ultimately help you other than pushing you towards somebody who can pray over you. If you're not a believer, you don't have the authority. You can cry out to Jesus, 
Jesus can come. That's what happened to me in 35 years ago, uh, leaving a drug-infested party, coming out of occultism myself. Someone preached Jesus to me just like I'm sharing Jesus with you right now. And I went home to hide and run from the persons that were sharing Jesus with me. But I couldn't get away. The Spirit of God convicted me and drew me. I knew that my life had opened up to deep things in the occult. But I also knew at that time the Spirit of God, the power of God was there. I called on Jesus to come in my life. I asked him to forgive me and cleanse me and come in. I asked him to completely set me free. I renounced all the things that I knew to sin, you know, of sin and issues in my life, turned to him completely, opened wide my life, and he came in like a flood, and the Spirit of God came in, and I was even filled with the Holy Spirit right then and there, and any and all dark presence literally was blasted out of my life, let alone forgiveness, let alone Jesus literally coming in my life. Now, if you're lost, if you don't know God, don't you want Jesus in your life? Don't you want him dwelling inside with his love, forgiveness, power, presence, and eternal life? Without that, what do you have? For believers right now, anyone under this category number three, possession, deep within, well, I, I'm saying that you're going to need to deal with individuals that are possessed. And sometimes you'll have to, if a person you, if they suspect and you suspect they're demonized, possessed wise, the demons dwelling within with control. Well, there's times in my offices and other places I've been where we, because the demons sometimes will hide, try to hide, because they don't want to engage a real believer with real authority that knows what they're doing. And please understand this. you got to start somewhere. All of us had our first time we led somebody to Christ, our first time we did a deliverance, and then do it again and again and again. You're going to need to. That's part of the calling that you can read about in Luke's Gospel, chapter 10. It's why we've been sent. And the book of Acts is the greatest current end times training manual modeling how we should be doing it all. It's that simple. So under category number three, possession. Possession. Well, possession is... Um, it, it, again, they could have opened up through satanic rituals, drugs, sexual transference, occultism, family bloodlines, going to a psychic, new age practices, uh, rem, you know, even remote viewing and astral projection. It all depends. Now, you can command anything within. Here's where the proof is in the pudding. Command, in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, I command any demonic presence within to come forward without harming the person, without bringing any harm. You're bound. I, again, you got to understand Luke's Gospel 10 and the way Jesus did it. And by the way, the simple way Paul, the apostle, did it, Acts chapter 16. He did it exactly. And he never, he never got to spend three years physically with Jesus. He did get saved, filled with the Spirit, knew his authority. And look at... The book of Acts chapter 16, he does the same thing. The girl doing the predictions of the future that has a demon within her, he turns around because he can feel it. He can feel the agitation. He turns around. I command, and you know, he, he commands the demon in the name of Jesus Christ to get out of her. That's what it's all about. And it left her and she was freed. Well, you can read all that occurred with that. And so when it comes to the inside issues, if you're a believer and you're evangelizing, you have somebody that you know or somebody calls on you or you meet somebody and you are getting a spiritual agitation, you can feel because the demon inside them can see you and knows who you are. And by the Holy Spirit, who's greater in you, massively greater in you, 1 John 4, than the demon himself, and the authority you have is beyond the sum total of all demons. I mean, the authority Christ has given you supersedes Satan himself. That's why Jesus said, I have given to you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome, the Greek word Nike, with decisive final victory, overcome all the power of the enemy, and nothing will harm you. So believer... Stand bold. Don't be suppressed. A spirit-filled, growing believer is going to um, be able to do this uh, with um, great freedom and a Holy Spirit boldness and a growing sense of empowerment and confidence in Christ. 
So whatever it is, whatever the conditions, whatever, you know, happens, whether at church, outside church, down, you know, if you're feeding homeless people some food, great. But if uh, you see on them or the Holy Spirit shows you or a demon manifests through them and starts speaking, stand your ground, don't get fear, fearful, but immediately command, take charge of the situation. Command, stop it. I command you to stop all demons to stop in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. I command whatever head spirit, head demon is here. I command you to respond. Tell me who you are. I command that no demons will go anywhere else. No new demons will come. And uh, I order you in the name of Jesus Christ. You might have to remind him as the Holy Spirit leads you to quote scripture and be very strong. You take control. You order the demons in the name of Jesus. That's why you have the authority. If you don't say it, if you don't do it, uh, the demons, you know, they're they're not then going to listen. They'll do what they need to do to either get away or to cause harm. So when it comes to full-blown possession, uh, and I would say this, I don't believe that a fully possessed a uh, non-believer, even if you're listening right now and you feel you're possessed by demons, that you can get free by yourself. I do believe you can call on Jesus if you've listened to this so far. And I would pray in Jesus' name that you would be free enough, and I would command all demonic presence in or on you to be bound completely as you call on the authoritative, uh, loving uh, uh, name of Jesus Christ May his blood, the cross, and the very person of Jesus be there for you. And I pray you be delivered. Turn to Jesus. Renounce any and all doorways. Renounce the demons. And if you get saved and Christ comes in, then you just keep on renouncing and you keep on praying against. You ask the Lord to deliver you and you keep turning. Jesus can clean um, and clear your life of uh, sin and uh, demonic presence and fill you with his uh, holiness, his righteousness, his Holy Spirit. And you, But I'm going to say this to you. You might need to get help. Now, I'm going to mention one other area, four, number four. Number four is simply this, satanic ritual abuse, multiple personality disorder. I'm not even going to go into this on this session. That's complex, where sub-personalities with demons on some and demons not on others, programming. That's We do another 26-hour training called Freedom Encounters. It's free right now on the web, shatterthedarkness.net, and you can have that. Let me also mention that uh, the brand new series that I think is one of the most important for the day we live in, let me say to all believers everywhere, we are in in the midst of the largest ramping up of dark presence in human history because it's so global. We have more people by the millions worldwide, all through Europe, Russia, everywhere. Satanism is growing, the New Age by, by hundreds of millions, globalism's development. And the operating presence and the manifest presence and the people possessed and the signs of voices in their head, control, and all its counterfeit signs and wonders, well, it's beyond anything on a global scale ever, and it's only going to get darker. There's only going to be more, and uh, we're going to see a massive, massive, on the event level coming up, uh, based on biblical prophecy, Satan's going to do more than anything in human history. That doesn't negate your authority, Christ with you, the victory in Jesus, or the mission that we have to do. It just means you and I and every single believer can't play any games. We can't be half in, half out. We can't be part of the world and one foot in the kingdom. Uh, how ridiculous and how um, grieving of the Spirit of God is that? So today, we're to be believers in Jesus and so I've got five things I want to share with you quickly here, too, on um, on whether you got, number one, oppression, number two, any spirits that you've been allowing to get on you through some unrepentant, undealt with sin doorway you've given. Number three, whether you know somebody completely possessed. And then ultimately, number four, the complex demonization of multiples and SRA. And again, all I can say, because we had to do it this way in the beginning, you will learn. The Spirit of God is with you. The Lord is with you. 
and you will learn how to deal with subpersonalities and get demons off them, how to uh, command. And this is why I say the proof's in the pudding. If someone is possessed, if there's real demons on the inside commanding them to come to the, you know, to come to full manifestation, well, or simply commanding as far as the Lord allows, and with no harm to any person, and no demon will leave, no other demons will come. I mean, literally take control of the situation with the authority and the right you have to order them in the name of Jesus. Don't be surprised if they screech or scream. Don't be surprised if they mock and cuss and hate it. Don't be surprised when they tremble at the name of Jesus. You, dear Christian, bear the power of the blood and the power of the authority of Christ. And the living Christ is in you, on you, and with you. As Paul says later, the Lord stood by my side. Don't back away and don't back down. Bold witnesses in Jesus are needed as never before in all history. That's going to include the full ministry of Jesus, which all churches, all pastors, all leaders should have been teaching, which only demonstrates that we've allowed liberal theologies and enculturation, and we've allowed the world to um, dictate how much of the kingdom that we're going to release. Now, either you're going to sit there and allow the world to dictate to you how much, or like in the book of Acts when Peter and those guys were commanded not to uh, speak in Jesus' name any longer, you know, he just said, hey, we're going to obey God. You know, you can judge for yourself, but, you know, instead of obeying men, we're going to obey God. You and I as spiritual leaders and pastors and uh, and believers, all believers, need to realize that all of the Scripture and everything there is, you know, it's been give, all of it's been given to us. we got to have all of it into practice. So I'm going to say again, put all of it into practice. God of peace will be with you. You'll be blessed putting the word into practice across the board. So the word of God is telling us to be clothed with the Holy Spirit, be clothed. If the Holy Spirit, if the word of God is telling us, you know, to win souls, go out. Listen, either you're obedient to the Great Commission and winning souls or not. Either you're obedient to the call to pray and pray faithfully and pray boldly or not. Either you're uh, obedient to what God says or you're not. It's not about just knowledge of Scripture. Knowledge is inseparable from either obedience or disobedience. So what is it? Here are the five things in the midst of how to get rid of or how to be free from dark spirits. Let me say this. If you're a believer in Christ, yes, we can be free, but that doesn't mean that we're not going to have attack from the enemy. Like Peter and the disciples did, like Job at some time, some cases like Job did. But in the sense of Ephesians 6, all believers must realize there's going to be some warfare coming your way. That's why God gave you the enormity of the armor of God when it's on the full, mighty, strong, manifest presence of God will be emanating in and through you. As Peter says in chapter 1, you'll be shielded by God's power, shielded by the actual manifesting, emanating presence of God. See, spirit-filled believers cannot be defeated, oppressed believers at the same time. Now, that doesn't mean that if you are being attacked that you can't be spirit-filled and respond, but a spirit-filled believer is going to respond. You're going to put up the prayers. You're going to command, get out, get away, and renounce and hold to the Word of God and quote the Word of God. Now, here's the five things that I think are very important uh, for you and I to be strong. Number one, in the midst of all of this, surrender everything to Jesus Christ your whole life. Everything. Surrendering all to Jesus, again, repenting of any sins you know of and uh, any areas. And I'm not just talking about, you know, some sins that, you know, I cussed the other day or I, uh, you know, got really angry for four days and was really mad and was really bitter. And Well, yeah, those got to be dealt with because you're going to grieve the Holy Spirit, Ephesians 4. But I'm saying also, again, take up the cross and follow Christ. If you don't do that, you're not obeying God. Jesus said, if you love me, you'll obey me. Let me tell you something. We receive every bit of grace and mercy by faith, but we experience and manifest that presence and power and victory in obedience. 
Obedience is inseparable from, inseparable from real faith. And uh, so it's vital that right now we surrender all to Jesus. We just look to the Lord, Lord, Holy Spirit, you know, uh, search me. This is uh, Psalm 139. Lord, search me and see if there's any offensive thing and lead me in the way everlasting. And that's what we want to do. You know, we, we want the Lord to detect any kind of, uh, you know, like I was going to take my car on a trip. I had a friend. I said, can you check? tie rods and wheels and all the uh, hoses and just check everything to make sure in this long trip I'm going to take that uh, there's nothing there that's going to break down right away. So he's, he was checking for flaws and issues, you know. When I pray Psalm 139 where it says, search me, O Lord, you know what I'm doing? I'm asking the Lord to do that. Look for what is um, a problem. Things that you don't want in your life. Now, some believers don't want to do this, but you don't realize that the sin issues and the non-obedient issues, well, it's like that rottenness, that food stuff we're laying out. It's the stuff that hinders the fullness of Jesus inside you. And why would we be, why would we be, I mean, literally nuts enough to try to walk a half-baked life? Either we are filled with the Spirit of God, which is the will of God, or we are grieving, Ephesians 4, or even quenching, putting out the Holy Spirit's fire, 1 Thessalonians 5. What do you want? Fullness in Christ and the fire of His Spirit. It involves what we see in the book of Acts. All Spirit-filled believers, well, they had their faith up. They were in the Word. They were in prayer. They were in worship. They were with the body of Christ. They were out soul winning. Every one of them are experiencing the manifest, incredible, supernatural operating presence of God. So surrendering all and, and, and stepping out, and, and let me just say that a great um, chapter is um, Romans 12. In view of all the mercies of God, you know, to offer yourself completely and totally to God. And, um, and or as we read James 4 about drawing near to God, there's action. Submit to God, resist the devil, draw near, he'll draw near in experiential presence. And that's the bottom line right there. Number two, though, simply in the midst of all this, say, Lord Jesus, deliver me from the enemy. I will say this after 35 years. I, st- I don't know everything. I count on Jesus. I don't need to be Jesus. Jesus is my God. He's the infinite God. I'm just a servant. So I'm going to call on the Lord. I love Psalm 34. I love the verse uh, that I many times uh, think on when the writer says, I sought the Lord and he answered me and he delivered me from all my fears. I like the fact that we're not just left by ourselves. We can ask Jesus because and based on who he is, his authority, his sinlessness, his blood, what he did at the cross, and the authority he holds. We can simply say, Lord Jesus, deliver me. Lord Jesus, attack the enemy. Lord Jesus, you know, and here's where God might give you by the Holy Spirit a heads up of what is happening, what the enemy is sending, what oppression, you know, why there is oppression, or why maybe there's a stronghold that you've given into, and then you've got to deal with that repenting of sin issues, and then also renouncing and then commanding. And that's where we get into point number three. Renouncing any and all sins that the Lord makes us aware of. That includes the oper- you know, being obedient, stepping out in obedience to God. And uh, more, and because here, I love this verse in Acts 9.22. After Saul of Tarshish is encountered by God, he gets saved He gets filled with the Holy Spirit. He begins to witness and share Christ. He's doing it more and more. And the Word of God says this. He grew more and more powerful. So in renouncing any and all sin, point three, this also means renouncing living, well, a a spectator Christian life. So many American, and I would say European believers, spectators, you hear it all the time. Have you put into practice all that Jesus says about prayer, about love, about forgiving others, about soul winning, about being filled and clothed and full of the Holy Spirit, about your authority, about 
I mean, you put into practice the Word of God and you keep repeating, you will grow experientially strong. You'll become more and more powerful and um, you'll be very able to do some great things because the Word of God becomes operative in those who put it into, put it into practice. There's blessing. There's strength. I mean, even First John chapter 2, the young believers became strong because, and they overcame the enemy, Satan, the evil one, because the Word of God was living in them. That means they were putting it, they were obedient. The Word of God can't live in you if you're not obedient to it. So I'm going to make a big issue of this. Be obedient to the Word of God. Don't wait on anybody else. You be obedient to all that God says and keep on doing, keep on doing it. You watch how your life will grow so strong. Number four, when it comes to the demonic, number one, surrender everything to Jesus. Number two, ask Jesus to deliver you and to work and to lead and guide. Number three, renounce all sins and so forth and even renounce any and all demons that you think may be around. Number four, though, command them. Lord Jesus, I acknowledge you've given me the authority. I command you demons, get out of here. And if I've given any room, I renounce that and I close the doors as the Lord has shown me. Lord Jesus, deliver me. But I command in the name of Jesus, get away from me. Get out of here. I renounce you. Don't come back. Those kind of things. And if you're dealing with somebody that's possessed, commanding any and all demons, and most people that are possessed have more than one demon, command the head demon and all the demons, get out of this person. All demons within and all demons that are connected, get out of the name of Jesus. Take authority until they're completely cleared. But don't forget, you must lead them to Jesus and lead them into the Word of God and lead them to be baptized and to grow and to get in the Word. You do not want to leave any new believer out on the field by themselves, and especially if they were possessed and just got saved. You don't want to leave them by themselves. They're here to be discipled as we've been commanded. You and I, as believers, been commanded to disciple them. Matthew 28, the Great Commission. So on that fourth level, again, ordering them, commanding them, get away, don't come back, you know, and uh, what you feel the Lord, the Holy Spirit, leads you to say. I, I've been led many times, get out of here, don't ever come back. And um, then I would say, on a fifth level, when it comes to oppression, clearing the air around you, commanding everything you get away, you know, and countering it by the word and quoting the word and standing up boldly, speaking against it. And you watch how you and the air around you, the, the idea of the atmosphere around you will, will be completely cleared as you, because you know why? The manifest presence of God will come through you. Put up praise. God inhabits the, the praise. Unleash prayer. There's power in it. Command with authority. And God's, you know, I believe, expressed authority strikes the demonic. And when you quote the word and stand boldly to do that, I literally believe the Holy Spirit will be filling you up, strengthening you up as uh, you clear the air around you, commanding the demons and all the attack and all the oppression to get away. And don't forget, stand your ground. And even in tough times of attack, you know, stand your ground to the very end, as Ephesians 6 says. You will always find that if you stand your ground, you never give in, you keep putting up the praise, even if it's hard, you keep renouncing, you know, the enemy and commanding against and asking the Lord to deliver you, and you stand without giving in to anything, whether it's a day or Sometimes when there's deep attack, three or four days or a week, you're going through stuff. Guess what? You won't regret the fact that you stood boldly and exercised obedience, your faith, praise, prayer. And actually, you'll come out stronger. The key is, will you be suppressed, pushed down, held down for months on end until you finally can't take any longer? Or have somebody else come by and pray things off of you and that's you know, you're gonna keep going back to somebody else, or are you and here's the concept of auto deliverance. I have authority in Christ. I am told to be self controlled and alert because my enemy is probably wrong. He wants to devour. 
I have authority that I have the right to use. I have the armor of God that must be on. I have the power of prayer. I have the name of Jesus. How long will we allow any sin or any demon to aggravate us? Repenting of sin and turning away means walking then in righteousness, the word of God. Commanding the demon, get out. Renouncing its lies, its confusion. That's vital. And that's part of what we're saying in number four here, commanding them to get away and doing a full, clear clearing. Number five, then, is simply this, surrendering all to Jesus, asking him to be refilled with the Holy Spirit. I love Psalm 81.10, when God says to the people then, open wide your mouth and I will fill it. That's the concept. Open wide your life. How can any Christian open wide their life if they know they got sin that they're holding on to? Or they've opened the door to a demonic presence and it's hanging on to an area, you know, trying to harass an area of your life. No, you can't be filled with faith and filled with fear at the same time. You can't be filled and clothed with the Holy Spirit and have the joy and the power and the presence of the living Christ at the same time have any open doors to the enemy. Let me say in the midst of all of this, the whole reason Jesus comes is to destroy the devil's work from top to bottom, which includes the fact that he led the human race into sin, came in to be the God of this world, this age, uh, to be the one that blinds minds and deceives and brings harm. Well, Jesus blasts the infinite against the finite. I mean, We're talking about the living Christ, sinless, the blood of Christ, the cross, the resurrection, the authority of God. That's why he says it in the Great Commission, all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Go make disciples of all nations. I've given you authority to trample on the dark spirits and overcome all the power of the enemy and nothing will harm you. In the midst of all of this, number one, number one issue under the lordship of Jesus fulfilling the mission. Win every single person to Christ you can. Compelled by the love of Christ, win every single person to Christ you can. I mean, literally, this is our calling. Someone says, well, Russ, you have a deliverance ministry. You are into exorcism. No, I'm into evangelism. I'm into soul winning. I'm into caring for lost people. The fact, though, is that many people today are going to be demonized in in certain levels. There are so many doors since the 50s, literally the 60s, and that have been opened up, and so many doors today that there are so many demonized individuals, and there seems to be so much attack and um, so much presence. That's why I urge you, in the hour that we live in, there is a training that is 14 hours long called Dark Rituals, Dark Powers. It's on our website, shadowthedarkness.net. It's free. And you can get a broader grasp of um, the larger picture of the dark sides manifesting and operative. And it's not going away. All Christian leaders should understand biblical prophecy shows that more dark presence, more possessed people, more attack is going to come. That's why every believer from, if you're a newer believer, then do all that you can to get the best discipleship you can. And we have some of that on our website under Dynamic Discipleship. That's why I'm saying in the first six months, every believer, new believer, should be taught about how to use the Word of God, be baptized, be filled with the Spirit of God, know the armor of God, know the authority of God, um, and, and, and grow in all kinds of aspects. And not just... Um, you know, dragged into a half-baked, enculturated, uh, cold uh, church setting. Uh, half-baked, cold believers don't lead anybody to do anything other than do what they're doing. You can evaluate the strength of your local church by looking into the book of Acts. Is God present? Is the living Christ operative? Do people get saved? Do prayers get answered? Is the power of the Holy Spirit experienced, not just talked about. You look in the book of Acts and all the services and all the meetings and all the stuff. They experienced the operative living work of Jesus, the manifest presence of the Holy Spirit, power of God and presence of God in worship, power of God in answered direct prayers. They're winning souls left and right. How did they do that? 
staying obedient. We've been called to take up the cross and step out and be obedient. So my question is, why as believers? And we need to do the evaluation even now. We don't need to wait on anybody else for a new program, a new thing. I can only steer you to the Word of God. Jesus said of you and me that if we're going to uh, you know, be his disciple, that we must deny self, take up the cross daily, and follow him. And that means, as Jesus said, you go read it, John 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, great chapters, that if you love Jesus, the proof of that is if you obey him. The proof of loving Jesus and following Jesus is putting the Word of God into action. And when you put the Word of God into action, into action, you grow, you get stronger, you become wiser, more knowledgeable, but you also begin to bear fruit. When Jesus says to pray, are you praying? When the Word of God teaches us to pray, be faithful in prayer, be committed in prayer, and, and on and on and on, are we daily? Um, are we worshiping? Are we gathering together? Our, listen, Jesus said, go preach the good news, the gospel, to every creature. Go to the highways and byways, compel them to come in. Are we? That's why I'm saying that if you want to be clothed with the full presence and power of God, find God's charismatic giftings in your life too. And let me say this, giftings do not negate the mission. The great mission and the reason to be clothed with the power of the Holy Spirit saturated with the power of the Holy Spirit. The power is for witnessing. Acts 1.8, the whole book of Acts. Every spirit-filled believer in the book of Acts was a soul winner. They were doing it. They were also a prayer warrior. They were also meeting for worship. They were also the ones that uh, led people to Jesus, engaged the demonic and the demons and commanded them out, uh, prayed for healing and saw healing. They were the ones where the signs and wonders were done. Because obedience is literally um, faith in action. And you know one thing about faith is this. Hebrews 11.6, it's impossible to please God without it. Those who come to him must believe that he is, exists, and that he is a rewarder of those who earnestly seek him. I uh, pray in the name of the living Christ for every believer listening to this Whenever, because of the omniscience, the omnipresence, and the omnipotence of God, of Jesus, I pray the living presence of Jesus and all of his work all over you and in you. I pray for you to be clothed with and saturated with and filled with the Holy Spirit. I pray for you to be an obedient brother or sister in Christ in your nation, in your city, in your area, launching out knowing, even if no one else goes with you, still I will follow. Even if no one else goes with you, you will follow Jesus. And just like Peter just like Paul, just like Stephen, like Philip, Acts chapter 8, by himself into a city evangelizing. Oh, there were some healing needs, and there were demons. And that growing believer took care of all of it. Later on, called the other believers to come in. Now, I don't believe in being a lone ranger, but I believe there's many times we have to just do it whether we're you know nobody else. You be the spark that gets the fire going in your church. You be the spark that gets the fire going in your Bible study. You be the one. Listen, Bible, believers haven't been, call, been called. We have not been called to simply go have Bible studies forever and be in a building and just study forever. That's excellent to study, but that's not the only thing. Study leads to obedience, to, to the mission, to, to action. If you're studying the Bible, then go study Ephesians chapter 2. Not only have we been saved by grace alone through faith, but we are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do good works that God prepared in advance for us to do. You know what those good works are? Winning souls, praying with power, getting answers, seeing people healed, people delivered, seeing miracles of God come in. Seeing people fed, seeing people housed, seeing people clothed, seeing the enemy crushed. So in the name of Jesus, once again, I pray and command all demonic presence, power, workings over anyone who's listening to this. Whether it's those involuntary feelings and thoughts and lies and confusion, I command you, get away. 
Free them. Lord Jesus, free the individual listening. If you're a believer that has opened a door and there's something on an area of your life, then repent of it. Holy Spirit, may you lead them to repent of grieving you and shutting that door. And I join you in rebuking the enemy, rebuking the demon, commanding them, get away from them now in Jesus' name. If in any, any way possible, by God's extraordinary miracle, a possessed person is listening, or even a high complex multiple, by the extraordinary miracle of God based on the cross, Christ, his blood, and that authority. I ask for a miracle for your life. I ask for you to be delivered. I ask for Jesus to destroy all of Satan's work in every ounce of your being, your life. I ask Jesus to save you. I ask Jesus to heal you. I ask Jesus to deliver you in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, stretch out your hands to save, heal, deliver. Even show sign, wonder, and miracle. Even extraordinary things right now to the glory of Jesus Christ, Father. To the glory of Jesus Christ. Unleash revival. Let the Spirit of God come in great power. Let every demon be crushed. Let every dark work be stopped. Let all sins be convicted of and dealt with. And may the fullness of Jesus, may the absolute fullness of Jesus, may you be clothed, filled. Hey, listen. This is simply Russ Dizdar. Shatter the darkness.net on the web. Live radio broadcast every day, Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. They're all archived here on Preemption Broadcast. We also unleash weekly. And there's so many courses now in series of messages we're doing. Don't forget the book, The Black Awakening, that deals a lot from beginning to end with spiritual warfare on a global issue, revealing, I believe, as nothing else I've seen, the agenda. It's one thing to know the origin of Satan, the nature of Satan and demons, and the method. But what about the agenda? God reveals the agenda. And whether you or I understand completely, that agenda is operative. Whether believers, but here's where we get the information, prophetic biblical revelation. So we lay a lot of that out in the book, The Black Awakening, and depending on the timing that you listen to this, another book coming out called Awesome Grace, Awesome Power, all about prayer and the real manifest presence and power of God in answers. Seeing into the future should be out real soon. And later on, our 1919 and the book on the abyss. Hey, listen, remember us. We have many of you that are friends in 50, 60 countries, literally now from all of our sites, 90 countries of the world. So again, we bless all of you in all those nations and all those places. For those who can, remember us in support. We need it. And for all who are believers, we simply ask as a brother, your friend and brother in Christ, keep us in your prayers and intercession. We love you until that day when Jesus comes. God bless you.